Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the slide animation in Blender 4.1 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So it's finally time for an upgrade on my MacBook so I can make better videos for you. So this is my request for you guys to help me save for a new one, and it's completely free for you. Just watch the whole video, like my videos, and that's it. So in this video, I'm going to use my all-time soda can. You can now download my 3D soda can model for free. Link in the description. So first start with set up the blend file. So this tutorial is inspired by the Blender Render. So I'll link his channel in the description. So press A to select all. Then press X to delete it. So if you are using my free 3D model soda can, I'll show you how to import that model. Go to the file and click on append. Then find your downloaded file and click on that. Click on the object. Select the middle soda can and click on append. Press option plus G to center the object on the 3D cursor. Then press S plus 0.6 to scale it down. And then press control plus A to apply the scale. Now let's set up the camera and press shift plus A to add a camera, then go to camera settings, change the focal length to 125 millimeters, then press N to unhide the sidebar and change the Y location to minus 31, then unfold the viewport display. Then press zero on your numpad to get to the camera view. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to edit, then click on preferences. Go to input and then check emulate numpad. Then change the pass part 2 to 0 0.8, so it shows a little bit of the viewport, but not that much. It will make sense later on, I promise. And now press Shift plus A to add empty plane axes. Then press F2 to rename it to Camera Focus. And for Mac users like me, press Fn plus F2. Then check the depth of field. And change the focus object to the camera focus. Then change the f-stop to 0 0.2. Then unfold the composition guides and check the thirds and the center. Now let's animate the soda can. So first start with changing the end frame to 100. So go to frame 60. So for the new version 4.1, to insert a keyframe, press K to insert a keyframe, then click on location and rotation. And this little orange thing is a keyframe. And then go to frame 50. So now we'll change the origin point to under the soda can. So to do that, press on the tab button to go to edit mode. So this is the tab button just right over the caps lock. Press 3 on your numpad to get to the side view. And then zoom in on the viewport and select this vertex. Press 0 on your numpad to go to camera view. Then press Shift plus S to snap it and select cursor to selected. Then press the tab button to go back to object mode. Then press on the point button to change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. So this is what we've done, so we can easily rotate the soda can from the bottom. Then press R to rotate. And I rotate around this much, like you see here on the left. Press K to insert a keyframe, then click on location and rotation. And now go to frame 1. Press G plus X to move it to the left on the X axis. And here on the left, you can see how much I move it. Change the Y rotation to 0, and change the Z rotation to minus 185. Press K to insert a keyframe, then click on location and rotate. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And now we are diving into the graph editor. Open a new window. By holding your mouse over here until this symbol shows up, then drag the new window that way you will until the new window show up. Then click here and change the editor type to the graph editor. Then press N to unhide the sidebar. Then unfold the object transforms. And now unhide all the rotations and locations except the X location. Then press the A plus home button to only show the keyframe that we need. And for Mac users like me, press Fn plus pile to the left. On frame 1, select the right handle. Then press V to change the handle type and click on free. And this is why we're using the free mode instead of the normal Bezier mode. Just because in the normal Bezier mode, all the keyframes affect each other and follow around. But in the free mode, it just affects the handle we selected and changes something with. So select the right handle. Press G to move it up and then to the left, just like this. Now play the animation by hitting the space bar. And this is what we have now. It's now nice and smooth. So now hide the X location and then unhide the Y rotation. Then on the frame 50. Select the left handle. 
Press V to change the handle type and click on Free, then select the left handle. Press G to move to the left, just like this. Then play the animation by hitting the space bar and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. So it's finally time to make something with this boring soda can. So we can make something we can use in a video. So in the description, I link my label texture. So now I'm going to show you how to set up my texture. So let's make a soda can label material. Then click here and change the editor type to shader editor. So here on the material selection, click here on the plus button to add another material. So click on new and then rename it to Red Bull Cactus. But if you use your own texture, name it after that instead, of course. Press the Tab button to go to the Edit mode. Select the area you want the texture to be. And I'm going to speed up this process, but continue to select the area. Then press Assign to apply the texture to the area. Then press the Tab to go back to Object mode. Then press Shift plus A to add an image's texture. And now plug the color into the base color on the principled BSDF. Click here to open the image and locate your texture. Then click on Open Image. And don't worry, we are going to fix the look of the texture, so don't panic, because it looks weird right now. Then go to the UV editing. Now press the point button and change back to median point. Then press U to change the UV mapping and click on the cylinder projection. Then press S to scale it down, and press G to move it. And then press S plus X to scale it up on the horizontal, so I'm going to speed up this process, but repeat all those shortcuts until the UV mapping looks like this. Go back to the layout. And here we have our label texture. I think this looks good. So let's continue with the video. Press 7 on your numpad to get to top view. Press R to rotate, and I'm going to speed up this process. But the goal is to make the label text face to the front view. And I rotate like this much. Then press Ctrl plus A to apply the rotation. Let's play the animation by hitting the space bar, and this is what we have now. I think this looks good. And click here on the playback. And change from play every frame to the frame dropping for a smoother playback in the viewport. Port, and press Z to change the shading mode and click on Render. So I'm rending in Cycles. So go to the Render Settings and change the Render Engine to Cycles. And if you have a GPU device, go and change to that for better rendering. Also change the max samples on the viewport to 64 and change the noise threshold to 0.1 so you can render faster. Also change the max samples on the render to 300. Then unfold the color management and change the look to high contrast. Now let's set up the HDRI. So go to World. Click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. Click on Open and choose you HDRI image. In the description, I linked the HDRI I used, so download that. Then unfold the film. And check the transparent, so we have the HDRI affected, but we can't see it in the viewport. Now back to the material settings. So change the metallic to 0.5, press Shift plus A to add a mix color, then plug the result into the roughness, and change from mix to add on the mix color. Then add an RBG Curves node. Plug the color into the A on the Mix color, and then add a color ramp. Plug the color into the B on the Mix color. Then change the factor to 1. Then add another image texture. Then plug the color into the FAC on the color ramp. Then open the fingerprints. I link that in my description, so go and download that. Then change from flat to box, and change the blend to 0.5. Then change the color space to non-color. Select the image texture. Press Ctrl plus T to enable the node wrangler. So this is how enable the Node Wrangler. Go to Edit, then Preference. Click Add On, then go to Search and type in Node Wrangler. Check the Node Wrangler. And here you go. Now plug the object into the vector on the mapping node. Select the color ramp. Press Shift plus Control plus the color ramp. So when you see this black and white thing, you know you did it the right way. Then change the scale on the mapping node to 0.1 and on the color ramp. Change the white value to 0.5, and then change the black value to 0.1. Then press Shift plus Control plus Principled BSDF. Then press Shift plus A to add a noise texture. Then plug the color into the color on the RBG curves. And press Shift plus Control plus Noise Texture. Then change the scale to 7.72, and change the detail all the way up to 15. And last change the roughness to 0, and then press Shift plus Control plus RBG curve. Click here to make a point. Then change the first number to 0 0.5454. Then change the second number to 0 0.175. Then click here to make another point. Then change the first number to 0 0.7954. 
then change the second number to 0, 61, 87, and the RBG curve will look like this good. Then add a bump node and plug the normal into the normal, then press Shift plus Control plus Bump node and change the strength to 0 0.043, and then change the distance to 0 0.1. Then add another noise texture, and plug the FAC into the height on the bump node, and press Shift plus Control plus Noise Texture, then change the scale to 700, and change the detail all the way up to 15. Press Control plus T to enable the node wrangler, and select the texture coordinate and press X to delete it. Now plug the object into the vector on the mapping node. Press Shift plus Control plus Noise Texture, change the X scale to 0, 012, then select the camera and change the f-stop to 0 0.4, then unfold the specular and add an invert color node, then plug the color into the IOR level, then add another image texture, plug the color into the color, then click on Open, and open the file named Smudges Large 0001. I'll link that in the description, so go and download that. And here we have a very cool soda can material. Then press Shift plus S to snap and select the cursor to world origin. Then press Shift plus A to add a plane. Press 1 on your numpad to get to the front view. Press G plus Z to move it on the Z axis. And press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. Then press S plus 5 to scale it by 5. Go to edit mode by hitting the tab button. Then select this vertex selector. Then select this two vertex. Then press E plus Z to extrude on the Z axis. And then select this two vertex. And then press Ctrl plus B to make a bevel. Then scroll on your mouse wheel to make some segments. And for you that don't have a mouse, here is the bevel settings. Then right click and click Shade Smooth. Press 0 on your numpad to go to camera view. Go to edit mode by hitting the tab button. Then press A to select all the vertices. Then press S plus X to scale it on the X axis. Then select this two vertices. And press G plus Y to move it on the Y axis. Then rename it to BG, which is shorting for background. And are you ready for the result? One, two, three. And here is my results. Thank you for watching, and I hope you like my tutorial. And if you do a video of this animation, go and publish that on Instagram and tag me, amalin.mpeg4. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.